Today is Low Sunday, the final day of the Easter octave, the conclusion to this week-long Feast of Feast. The meaning for this name is a little obscure, lost to the mists of time, but it seems quite likely that it is in contrast to the High Sunday a week ago. In recent decades, perhaps even in recent centuries, it's a day that has been marked also by low attendance of the faithful. It is ironic then that the gospel of today should be about the dangers of not coming to church. Because this story, the story of St. Thomas and the appearance of our Lord inside that locked room, is, I think, deliberately liturgical. As he wrote it, I am sure that St. John was thinking of those meetings that he and his fellow Christians went to on the first day of the week, gathering in a room in someone's house, gathering to celebrate the resurrection, gathering that Christ might be present in their midst. Our Lord's greeting, peace be with you, is not a mere hello, but a formal ritual greeting in the way that we ourselves are accustomed to from our liturgy. In St. John's account, the risen Christ appears to the disciples first when they are gathered together. It is not an isolated encounter, but a communal one. It is together, gathered on the Lord's day, that we meet the risen Lord. Don't miss out. It is communal, it is shared, but then it is intensely personal, just as it was on the morning of that same day for St. Mary Magdalene in the garden. In St. John's Gospel, the public and the intimate are constantly at play. St. Thomas gets a very bad press. People call him doubting, as if his slowness to believe was a grave moral failure, as if we would do any better. What's more, most of the paintings of Saint, or the encounter St. Thomas has in that upper room show him poking his hand anatomically at the wound in our Lord's side. Yet that moment does not actually appear in Scripture. From our Gospel, St. Thomas does not reach out his finger. He sees our Lord, he knows him, he believes. He proclaims, my Lord and my God. Blessed are they that have seen, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. St. Luke and St. Matthew have their extensive lists of Beatitudes, but this is the only one in St. John. Blessed are they who have believed thanks to the testimony of others. And that is, of course, us. It was not like today, when a smartphone's camera will give some kind of record of even the most trivial happening. Now, this central moment in the whole history of the universe, the whole history of creation, is known to us only by the testimony of witnesses. We will not, in this lifetime, enjoy the same physical proof that the disciples did. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. That is us. And here, in Thomas's cry, we come full circle. St. John began his gospel with that great prologue, telling us that Christ was God from all eternity. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Now, with Christ's great work finished, on the first day of the new creation, St. Thomas proclaims this identity from his own mouth. This is the point of the gospel. Everything within its pages, from the miracles to the cross, proclaims that Christ is God. And in these pages, as we read them, as we read them liturgically, as we read them personally, we encounter Christ just as truly as did those first disciples. And as always in St. John's Gospel, we are left with a question. How do we respond? Because for all that we are part of a community, for all that we are part of a great liturgical action that stretches out from these walls and to enfold the entirety of creation, St. John wants us to know that each of us has a choice. How will we respond? How will we meet the risen Christ there within our locked walls? Because this is the way to life. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly, says our Lord. We meet him 
in the midst of the community, gathered to proclaim his resurrection, to reach out and touch him with our hands. But then each of us is alone with him. In the eighth chapter of St. John, our Lord encounters the woman taken in adultery in the presence of a large crowd. At his challenge, her accusers peel away until the moment of judgment. It is just her and him. That is where we are. The crowd has gone and we are alone with him. Go and sin no more, he said to her. My Lord and my God, said St. Thomas, in that upper room when all the disciples had faded into the background and it was just him and Jesus. Each of us will come face to face with him. Each of us will come to the dreadful moment of judgment. It will be just you and Jesus. And to prepare ourselves, we come here, reaching out and receiving him in this Mass, in Holy Communion. We have our encounter with the risen Christ, not in the same way that St. Thomas did, but no less truly. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. <clears throat> May we have this blessing and be transformed by it. May we come face to face with Christ, our friend, our merciful judge, our saviour. May we be taken out of darkness of unbelief, transfigured into our true and final selves in the power and light of Christ's resurrection. And then, when we encounter him face to face, may we be taken at last to follow him into heaven, where he lives and reigns in light, glory, power and majesty with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and for endless ages. Amen. Amen.